What's up, YouTube? Once again, it is your boy, Cordy Boy. Today we'll be talking about airmets and sigmets, a very overlooked but critical part in mission planning for any sortie. So strap in, because you're watching Toolkit. Icing. Turbulence. And thunderstorms. These three conditions should be avoided at all costs. Best case scenario, it makes for a slightly bumpy or uncomfortable ride. Worst case scenario, could mean death for the crew and all involved. With that being said, we're going to look into what tools pilots have to avoid these conditions during the mission planning phase. In order to do so, pilots need to look into the airmets or sigmets that are applicable at the airfields they're departing and landing at and along the route of flight that they choose to fly on. So what exactly is an airmet or a sigmet? So first of all, what is an airmet? An airmet stands for Airman's Meteorological Information. Airmets are issued for weather that may affect aircraft safety and are typically issued for icing conditions, IFR conditions, mountain obscuration, and moderate turbulence. There are three types of airmets. The first one is the Airmet Sierra. Airmet Sierras are issued for mountain obscuration or ceilings that are less than a thousand and or three miles over a wide area. Airmet Tangos are issued for moderate turbulence or sustained surface winds of 30 knots or greater and airmet Zulus are issued for moderate icing and freezing levels. Airmets are published by the Aviation Weather Center. The AWC will terminate the airmet when the condition runs away, the time runs out, or if they need to, they'll extend the time. Both airmets and sigmets must affect an area of at least 3,000 square miles at any one time. However, if the forecast area is very large, it could mean that only a small portion of that total area can be affected at any one time. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about sigmets. A sigmet stands for significant meteorological information. Sigmets can be further broken down into two different types. The first type is non-convective or non-thunderstorm sigmets. Non-convective sigmets can be issued for severe icing, severe or extreme turbulence, dust storms or sandstorms lowering visibility to less than three miles or volcanic ash. Convective sigmets are issued for thunderstorms. Along with the convective sigmet, it is implied that severe or greater turbulence, severe icing, and low level wind shear could be encountered while flying through a convective sigmet. Sigmets can be even further broken down into active or outlook sigmets. An active sigmet means that those conditions are currently being experienced in that area. An outlook means that those conditions can be expected during the time period for which the sigmet is active. So how long do sigmets last? Well, a non-convective sigmet generally lasts for four hours. However, if any of the conditions are due to a hurricane, i.e. icing or severe turbulence, they will last six hours. An active sigmet can be valid for up to two hours, but they are updated every hour, usually at 55 past the hour. Meanwhile, an outlook segment is usually forecast for four hours. The big picture is that airmits should be avoided if possible. An outlook segment should be avoided unless the mission is absolutely critical. And flight through an active segment should be, don't even think about it, okay? So how do you set up your foreflight in order to mission plan with respect to weather? Let's take a look at it. 
In this hypothetical situation, let's say I wanted to go to Shreveport and fly into Houston. Nice, there we go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to look into the flight category tab right here. This will tell me the green dots means that we're VFR, the blue means marginal VFR, and the red dots mean that it's IFR conditions. Next thing we need to do is let's check out the air meds and sigmets. Oh, yikes. There's an outlook sigmet and an active sigmet directly between our route of flight. So even though the green dots are there, clearly there's some type of weather phenomenon going on. Let's take a look at the radar. Wow, there it is. So there's a massive thunderstorm right between Houston and Shreveport, actually right on top of it. But even though that's the case, look at all those green dots. So obviously using the weather radar, you would have known to avoid that area. But I personally would avoid the Outlook Sigmet as well because pop-up thunderstorms are likely for that entire area for the next six hours. All right, so this is the same mission planning using Sky Vector. Over here, I go to Flight Plan and type in Shreveport, go into Houston, and everything looks good. Shows me plenty of green dots. Looks like it's VFR from Houston all the way out to Shreveport. Up here, we're gonna go up to Layers. I'm just gonna activate Sigmets. Oh wow, light, moderate, convective sigmet. Outlooks. Okay, so there's a convective outlook. Let's look at uh, icing. Oh wow, there's moderate icing. You can click that, read about it. Between 16,000 and flight level 280, okay. Now let's look at the satellite. Now that is the full picture. Icing, thunderstorms, and just generally poor flight conditions. So that's how you do that in Sky Vector. Another great tool at your disposal is using the IR satellite, which tells you how thick the clouds are by their temperature. Cloud top heights, I don't use that too much. Primarily just use the weather radar. Also, don't forget to click on the turbulence as well as instrument flight condition and mountain obscuration. All in all, that's how you do very surface level mission planning in Sky Vector. And there you go. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. It's everything you need to know about airmets and sigmets, as well as some very surface level mission planning with respect to poor weather. So I'm thinking this will be the first of a few videos on weather and mission planning, and like a little playlist of its own. Comment, let me know what you think about doing something like that. Let me know what other things you'd like to discuss. Please share this video with whoever you think needs it and please subscribe if you like the content I'm pushing out. At the time of this recording, I have 99 subs, really want to hit 100. That'd be a huge milestone for me. With that being said, till next time, don't get caught flying through airmets or sigmets if you can avoid it. See ya.